The Georgians have a saying, at the beginning of time when God was giving out land to the various nations of the world, the Georgians were too busy drinking to attend. Arriving late, God was angry and asked why they had dishonoured him so. There was now no land to give them. But the Georgians replied that far from dishonouring God, they were late simply because they'd been drinking to his health and this had taken quite some time. God was pleased with their answer and so gave them the tiny piece of land he'd been keeping for himself. My name's Johnny Bealby, I founded Wild Frontiers and in this short film I'm going to talk about tourism in one of my favourite countries in the world, Georgia. Georgia is one of the most beautiful countries you're ever likely to visit. The Grand Caucasus Mountains that stretch all the way from the Black Sea coast to the shores of the Caspian Sea are high and untamed with snowy peaks and lush green valleys that bloom in the spring with a multitude of wild flowers. And among them live the Georgians, an independent race whose creed is giving and living with their delicious food and wine. I first travelled through the country back in 1999, not so long after independence. At the time, the country was a mess. Separatist movements in both Abkhazia and South Ossetia had caused a flood of refugees to hit the capital. There was little in the way of food or electricity. The place was more famous for banditry and kidnapping than it was for tourism. But in 2003, all that changed as a new government under the leadership of Columbia Law School educated and Western-looking Mikhail Saakashvili took power in the Bloodless Rose Revolution. With the sweeping away of the old communist cronies came investment and a new sense of optimism. I personally brought our first Wild Frontiers group here the following year, and we have been operating adventure holidays in Georgia ever since. The capital of Georgia is Tbilisi, a place with a pretty old town echoing the cultural and religious crossroads on which the city sits. Over the centuries, most regional powers, the Turks, Arabs, Persians, Crusader Knights and Cossack warriors, have all ventured this way, with Tbilisi being sacked an extraordinary 27 times. But today it's a lovely place to start and end your trip, with ancient churches, mosques, the old sulphur baths for which the town is famed, great restaurants and some very good accommodation. Travelling northwest out of the capital, the first place you'll come to is the twin UNESCO World Heritage Sites of Jvari Church, perched spectacularly on top of a hill, overlooking the ancient capital of Maxveta. Maxveta is home to one of the country's most important cathedrals, where Christianity was officially adopted as the state's religion back in 337 AD. From here you can carry on north, up what's known as the Georgian Military Highway, past the Ananuri fortified church complex where, if the weather's right, you might like a swim in the adjoining lake, and on into the mountains. And it's the mountains that form the real highlight of most trips to Georgia. The most accessible region is Kazbegi, sitting in the lee of the imposing 5,000 metre peak that goes by the same name. From here, staying at a recently converted luxury hotel, you can walk up to the spectacularly positioned Gegeti Church and other surrounding hills. If you're tempted by our wonderful wild walk in the Caucasus tour, from here you can head up a side valley to Juta for two nights trek over the Abudulauri Pass and into the neighbouring valley of Roshka. Further to the east is the picturesque valley of Tusheti, where we run our horse riding adventures, and to the west, with some of the highest villages in Europe, lies the remote and rarely visited Svaneti Valley. Both of these regions are renowned for their fierce independence and their dramatic Tolkien-esque defensive towers. But Georgia is not only about the mountains. With a history dating back to Jason and the Argonauts, the Silk Road and Imperial Russia, the country is blessed with a plethora of cultural sites. The pretty town of Gori, birthplace to one of Georgia's most infamous sons, Joseph Stalin, has an excellent museum with all manner of memorabilia, including the train carriage in which Stalin travelled to the Yalta Conference in 1945. At Vadzia and Uplesteke, you have two fascinating cave towns. Dating back to the first millennia BC, these troglodyte conurbations, with up to 3,000 dwellings, were used in times of invasion and to avoid religious persecution. At Akalteke, you have an amazing 12th century castle, and, very importantly, 
To the east, in the Kaheti region, you have the home of winemaking. According to the wine historian Hugh Johnson, Georgia has a pretty solid claim as being the birthplace of winemaking, with evidence of viniculture dating back more than 7,000 years. This establishment that I'm at now, called Kazmaruli, has been producing wine since 1533. Needless to say, with that much experience, Georgian wine can be pretty darn good. Added to all that, Georgia is safe and stable and has a good and improving tourist infrastructure. On an adventure here, as well as exploring many impressive cultural sites, you could ride, trek, mountain bike and whitewater raft. Visas for most can be gained on entry and it's only four and a half hours flying time from London. Georgia is a country that's likely to get under your skin. The history, the culture, the magnificent landscapes, the cuisine, the wine, not to mention the hospitality of the Georgian people, is bound to make you want to come back time and again. So you've been warned, your first trip to Georgia is unlikely to be your last.